Hi guys, on this episode of Entertaining Made Easy, I'm going to teach you how to put together the perfect end of summer menu. Now here in Houston, Texas, it still feels like the middle of the summer, and I'm not even joking, it'll probably feel this way until November, okay, maybe even December. But anyhow, you can certainly serve this meal any time of the year. As long as you can use your barbecue grill, you can make this menu. The grilled lamb chops are definitely the star of today's menu. They're marinated in a Greek selection of herbs and spices. And the best part about it is that you can marinate these one or two days ahead of time, which couldn't make party planning simpler. The appetizer is equally impressive and easy to make. I'm going to teach you how to make kolokito giftedes. Say that fast three times. All that really translates to is zucchini meatballs. Now they're not meat because they're made with zucchini, but they're loaded with herbs and spices and shredded, lots and lots of shredded zucchini and feta cheese. And they're fried to a crispy perfection on the outside and they're soft and juicy on the inside. We're gonna serve these and the lamb chops with the creamy tzatziki sauce. I never host anything, a dinner, a lunch, a brunch without tzatziki in there somewhere. So it's gonna be in almost every episode. Get ready for that. Next, my creamy cucumber salad is filled with sliced refreshing cucumber radishes a little bit of red onion and it's all held together with a creamy tzatziki type dressing it's going to be perfect to serve alongside the lamb chops and also the perfect side to the lamb chops is the mediterranean rice that i'm going to serve it's going to be lemony and ref refreshing and it's going to be a great starch to soak up all those lamb juices and to eat with the tzatziki and the cucumber salad. So lemony and so fresh. For dessert, I'm making a family favorite, my galakta buriko rolls. Galakta buriko is a classic Greek custard pie and I'm just making little individual sized roll-ups of this, of this dessert. It's delicious because it's a semolina custard that's flavored with a little bit of orange and then it's wrapped in flaky, buttery phyllo. Then I drench it with a delicious aromatic honey syrup. Your guests are gonna love this and you're gonna love making this because you can make this two weeks ahead of time. What could be easier than that? Let's get started with making this menu. Dessert is definitely my favorite part of any meal and because we can make this one two weeks ahead of time, yes, you heard that right, two whole weeks before you serve this, you could assemble the whole thing and keep it in your freezer. Just take it out the day before, thaw it in the refrigerator if you have room. If you don't have room, it's not a problem at all. You can just bake it from freezer to oven, no problem. It's still gonna be tasty, it's still gonna be delicious. It's gonna make your entertaining stress-free and what could be better than that? Before we begin, let me just give you some tips about working with phyllo. Lots of people get nervous when it comes to making a dish that has phyllo in it. It's really simple as long as you follow my easy tips and tricks. So you can find phyllo in the, freeze, in the freezer size of your supermarket or your specialty food store. It's usually sold in the Mediterranean or Mid Middle Eastern food markets. Now, once you bring it home, if you know you're gonna be working with it right away, thaw it out in your refrigerator overnight, then take it out of the refrigerator, leave it in its packaging, and leave it on the countertop at room temperature for an hour or two so it can come to room temperature and it'll be so easy to work with. Do not take it out of the packaging because it'll start to dry up and crumble on you when you go to work with it. That's really all you need to know to work with phyllo. Let's start making this delicious dessert. So we're gonna begin by making the syrup as in every syrupy dessert. Now I'm gonna use the juice for the syrup and I'm gonna need the zest for the filling. So I'm gonna get the zest out first so that way once I juice it, uh, I won't be struggling to get the zest off a squished up orange. So we're gonna begin with two cups of granulated sugar, two cups of water, and all of the juice of an orange. We're gonna bring this to a boil and then just stir and cook it until the sugar dissolves, and then we're gonna add the honey. Once the sugar is dissolved, go ahead and take it off of the heat, pour the honey into it, and then you can take the same measuring cup that the honey is in and just use it to stir the syrup so that way all of the honey that's stuck onto the measuring cup will melt into the syrup. Give it a nice stir and set it aside to cool completely. I have a saucepan over medium low heat and inside I have three cups of whole milk. It's gonna warm gently while we combine all of the rest of the filling ingredients. So in my mixing bowl over here, I already have the orange zest. I'm gonna add finely ground semolina flour with a little bit of granulated sugar. And we're gonna use two whole eggs and one yolk. I'm gonna save the white 
for tomorrow's breakfast. I'm also going to add a tablespoon of cornstarch to keep the filling nice and light and a little pinch of salt. And now just mix this all together until it's nice and smooth. So once the milk becomes steaming hot, go ahead and pour some of it into your egg custard mixture so that way it can begin to temper it. And tempering really just means to bring up the temperature so that way when the egg mixture goes into the milk, it does not turn into scrambled eggs. That's it, now we're gonna add all of this back into the pot. And now we're just gonna continue to stir this and cook this over medium low heat until it begins to thicken. So the second it starts to boil, then just take it off the heat. You don't wanna cook this too much, you want it to coat the back of a spoon, just like that. And that's how you know it's ready. Now we're just gonna stir in the vanilla extract, just like that. This custard that smells so good, I could just sit down and eat a big bowl full of this. I'm gonna set this aside, and now we're gonna work with the phyllo. So now I have some unsalted butter that I'm gonna put this over the heat, about medium heat, and I'm gonna cook it until it's nice and melted. Then you wanna make sure you have a tray that's lined with parchment paper ready to go. You wanna have a little assembly line ready to go. Have your melted butter on one side, the custard on the other. If you have a little mini ice cream, ice cream scoop, it's gonna make it easy. Otherwise, go ahead and use a tablespoon and you're gonna need some sort of pastry brush to drizzle the butter on top. Now we're gonna work with one sheet of phyllo at a time and this is the thin cut phyllo, which is the number four. You're gonna take the first sheet, well, before you do that, <laughs> we need butter. We're gonna just drizzle a little bit of butter over half of the sheet. And then we're gonna fold it over. And don't worry if it rips or anything like that, no big deal. And then we're gonna drizzle some more butter along the sides. You don't have to brush it, okay? And then we're gonna take a scoop of this creamy semolina pudding and we're gonna put it in the center all the way on the bottom. We're gonna fold both sides over. just like that, and then drizzle a little bit more butter all the way down the center. And now we're just gonna roll up. Keep in mind that this is something you wanna do light-handedly. You don't wanna make this super tight because the custard is gonna cook and you wanna leave room in there so that way it doesn't all ooze out. Go ahead and place it on your baking tray that's lined with parchment paper. Again, we're gonna drizzle butter down half the side of the phyllo, fold over, some more butter all the way around. A scoop of custard, fold over. Some more of that glorious butter. And then we're gonna roll up. So we have 21 little phyllo custard rolls and I have a little bit of custard left over which will not go to waste. You can go ahead, if you have some left over, which you probably will, go ahead and sprinkle some cinnamon on top and have at it, enjoy it. Now I'm gonna brush all of the tops with the rest of this melted butter. Now if you're running low on melted butter while you're making these, and I almost ran out, so I went ahead and added about four or five tablespoons of butter to this, I just melted it. You can just also swirl in some olive oil, that would be fine too, but I love the taste that butter leaves onto um, phyllo pastry, it's just, a little more decadent, so I went ahead and melted a little bit more butter instead of doing the olive oil thing. But if you're running low on butter, go ahead and do that. So at this point, you can do a few things. If you are making these a day at the party, then what you wanna do is make sure that your oven is preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and you're gonna bake them until they're nice and golden. That's gonna take anywhere between 30 to 35 minutes, depending on your oven. Now, the best thing about these is that at this point, you can take these and pop them in the freezer. Once they're nice and set and completely chilled and frozen, wrap them in some plastic wrap so that way they don't absorb the aromas that are in the freezer, especially if you have some herbs or onions in there. You don't want that flavor in your custard rolls. So once they're set and they're frozen, wrap them in plastic wrap, and then when you're ready to bake them, all you have to do is take them out from freezer and put them in the oven. They're gonna take about 15 minutes longer, but you could also thaw them out the day before 
you're going to bake them so that way they take the same amount of time. As soon as the galakta buraka comes out of the oven, once it's golden brown all around, you want to take it out and pour the cool syrup all over the top. You could also dust it with some um, powdered cinnamon, that would be nice too. Let it sit and absorb all that aromatic syrup and then you can just serve it right away. It's great to bake this dessert as soon as your guests are coming in, so just put it in the oven and let it bake until it's golden, pour the syrup on it and then set it aside. Once everyone is wrapped up eating, go ahead and put it on a beautiful serving dish and it's going to be the perfect temperature to serve to the guests come dessert time. Next we're going to make the tzatziki sauce, which is pretty much going to go with every single savory thing on this menu. Let's get started. While the cucumber is straining, I'm going to add sour cream to some Greek yogurt that I have in this big mixing bowl. And then I'm going to grate one large garlic clove into this sour cream and the yogurt. If you're using uh, smaller garlic cloves, then go ahead and put two if you really like it garlicky like I do. Season it with a little bit of salt and some freshly ground black pepper. Lots and lots of black pepper and tzatziki to make it taste extra good. Mix it all up. Now we're going to add the cucumber to this. You can let the cucumber strain for 30 or 40 minutes, but I'm just going to go ahead and squeeze out as much of the excess liquid as I can using my hands. Then add the cucumbers to the creamy yogurt mixture. Take a look and see how much liquid has been released. You don't want that in your yogurt mixture because it'll make it very watery. Stir it all together until it's all combined. You can chop up some fresh mint in here or some fresh dill. I'm going to leave it as is and then I'm just going to garnish it with some uh, dried up dill at the end when I'm serving it. And that's it. Your tzatziki is ready. You can transfer this. In, well, don't transfer it yet. Go ahead and taste it first and adjust the seasoning if it's needed. That tastes perfect to me. Transfer it to a container, store it in the fridge. You can even put some paper towels on top of it, clean paper towels on top so it can absorb any excess moisture. Store this in the fridge up to two to three days before you use it. And tzatziki, just like that, in the wink of an eye, it's ready. Now we're going to move on to making this delicious appetizer, Colokito Keftedes. Our zucchini meatballs are fresh and delicious and they're so simple to make. Now you can definitely put all of the ingredients together one day ahead of the party. Just keep in mind that zucchini does continue to release moisture and liquid as it sits in the fridge. So all, don't panic when you go to the next day to take it out of the refrigerator and you're going to see lots of liquid in there. Just go ahead and carefully drain it out into the sink. Pat it dry with some paper towels and throw some more breadcrumbs in there, maybe about a half cup of breadcrumbs. You'll know that you, you'll know that you put in enough breadcrumbs when it dries up a little bit and the excess moisture goes away. Don't go crazy with the breadcrumbs because you do want the inside of these little meatballs to be nice and juicy when you go to fry them. Let's go over the ingredients on what you're going to need to make these. We're going to need some zucchini that's been washed and you're going to leave the skin on. We're going to grate these in a little while two eggs that we're going to slightly beat, lots of feta cheese, vegetable oil for frying, some black pepper, salt, crushed red pepper flakes, fresh green onion, also known as scallions, fresh mint, and some breadcrumbs. Begin by grating the zucchini. You can use a box grater, or if your um, food processor has an attachment, go ahead and use that. Once they're grated, go ahead and put them in a colander and sprinkle with a teaspoon of salt. Now this is a very important step that you do not want to skip. This is going to help draw out all of the moisture that is in the zucchini so that way your zucchini meatballs can stay together. We're going to set this aside. Make sure if you're going to set it aside on the counter, put a bowl underneath it because a lot of liquid is going to come out of this zucchini or set it to drain in the sink. At least 30 minutes is what we're looking for. While that is happening, I'm going to go ahead and finally slice the scallions and the mint. 
So after some time, at least 30 minutes, you're going to see that the zucchini has released tons of water. You don't want that in your fritters or in your meatballs. And as a matter of fact, you also want to squeeze out as much as you can from the zucchini using your hands. Add the zucchini into the bowl with the mint, the scallions, and the feta cheese. Now go ahead and crumble the feta cheese. Always buy feta cheese blocks and crumble it yourself. It's so much fresher tasting and better quality than the crumbles that are sold at the supermarket. Mix this all together. Now we're just gonna beat together these two eggs. Just slightly beat them and add them into your zucchini mixture. Go ahead and add the breadcrumbs. Now you can use regular breadcrumbs. Make sure that they're unseasoned or panko breadcrumbs. A little bit of crushed red pepper flakes. If you like the heat, if not, leave them out and just go ahead and put in some extra freshly cracked black pepper, some salt, and go ahead and mix it all up. I went and I added the eggs a little too soon. I would recommend that you wait and you add the eggs last. So that way you can go in and give this a taste without the eggs if you're concerned about you know, tasting raw eggs because then you can go ahead and give it a taste and see if it needs any more salt. I like to mix this with my hands in the end. I always start off with a fork, but then I go in with my hands because it helps compact it together to make sure it's nice and sticky. And then I like to form little walnut-sized meatballs, just like that. I like to have a baking pan handy so that way I can form these and put these right onto the baking pan. Simultaneously, I have some oil, vegetable oil, that's heating up over medium-high heat in a saucepan, so that way, once I'm done, these are gonna be ready to be popped in there. So the zucchini meatballs are ready. Now I have a little station set up. I have some breadcrumbs that I'm gonna roll them in. These are plain, unseasoned breadcrumbs, just like the ones that are in the zucchini fritters. I have my zucchini fritters lined up and the oil that's ready to go. And you also wanna have a plate or a pan a plate or a baking pan that's lined with paper towels so it can drain the excess oil. Now the ideal temperature is 350 degrees to fry them in. You want the oil to reach 350 degrees. Now I like to bring it up a little bit higher because once I drop a few of the uh, zucchini meatballs in here, the temperature of the oil is gonna go down. The lower the temperature is, the higher the chances of them getting soggy with oil. So I'm gonna roll them in the breadcrumbs and I like to do a few at a time so that way they're ready just to go from plate into the oil. And don't put more than five in if your pan is as big as mine. You wanna fry these until they're nice and golden all around. That's gonna take about five to six minutes. The zucchini meatballs are ready just like that in no time. They cook in about five to six minutes. It just depends on how big or how small you form them. Now a make ahead tip for this recipe, if you wanna make it ahead of time, kind of put it all together and then just fry them off the day that you're serving it. You can totally make the whole mixture the day before, not longer than that, because then it releases way too much liquid. The day before you're planning on serving, serving these, put all of the ingredients together, mix them up, cover them with plastic wrap or put them in an airtight container and store them in your refrigerator. The next day when you go to take them out, you're gonna see that they've released some more liquid. Go ahead and drain some of that out over the sink and get rid of the excess liquid. And also go ahead and put a few extra breadcrumbs in there, maybe half Half a cup more should be good. Mix it up. Once it dries up a little bit, you'll know it's ready. Form them into the meatballs and then fry them off. They're going to be tasty and delicious. It is time to take a bite. I can't wait. These are my favorite appetizers. When I was in Greece this past summer, I had these in every restaurant that we went to. They are my favorite appetizer. When you make them, you will know why. They will quickly become your favorite too. I'm gonna go ahead and take a bite. And you'll know why they taste so delicious with the tzatziki sauce once you give it a try all together. Oh my God. Crisp on the outside, juicy, moist, so flavorful on the inside. The scallions and the mint brighten this up so much. It just tastes amazing. It's so, so, so good. The creamy tzatziki is the perfect accompaniment with this. I think you guys are gonna love it. Let's move on to making the cucumber salad. So go ahead and finally slice the cucumber. You can do this with a knife, but if you have a mandolin, then you can take out the mandolin and very carefully slice the cucumbers. 
Place the cucumbers in a colander and sprinkle them with about half a teaspoon of salt. Mix them together and set them aside for about 30 or 40 minutes to release, so that way they can release a lot of their liquids and then they can all drain out. While that's happening, I'm gonna finely slice my radishes. Radishes in cucumber salad add that nice peppery crunchy bite that, that are so yummy and so good. Finally slice them. Now these are too small to um, put through a mandolin, so I like to just do this by hand with a sharp knife. And then I'm gonna thinly slice a red onion. Now I'm gonna use about a quarter of this onion, as thin as you can get those slices. Now this is a creamy cucumber salad and the dressing consists of some yogurt, this is Greek yogurt, and some sour cream. Now to that, I'm gonna finely chop some fresh mint. In goes the freshly chopped mint. I'm gonna add some dill. If you have fresh dill, go ahead and add fresh dill, but I'm gonna add some dry dill to this just because I'm out of it. I'm gonna season it with a little bit of salt, not too much because the cucumbers have already been salted. Some freshly ground black pepper, about a tablespoon of fresh lemon juice. I'm also gonna grate a clove of garlic in here. Lots of flavor in this cucumber salad. And I'm also gonna put some vinegar in here, about two tablespoons. You can do all lemon juice, but I like the layers of flavor when you have some acidity from the lemon, acidity from the vinegar. You're gonna have so many flavors in the background. Go ahead and mix this all up until everything is nicely combined. Go ahead and add the radishes, the sliced onion, and now you can go ahead and add the cucumber. Mix it together until the cucumber is all coated with this delicious creamy sauce. So once you mix it all together, give it a taste and if it needs more salt or pepper, go ahead and add it. Otherwise, you can keep this in your refrigerator right until you're ready to serve it. It's ready. Next, we're gonna make the Mediterranean rice pilaf. It's fresh, it's lemony, and it is delicious, especially paired with lamb and the tzatziki and the cucumber salad and the zucchini fritters. The whole thing is gonna to go together so well. Just a few ingredients and it comes together in no time. You're gonna to wanna to make this about 40, 45 minutes before your guests arrive or before you're gonna serve the meal. And it's gonna stay perfectly warm if you keep the pot on very, very low heat. If your oven is already on and if you made it ahead of time, you can put it in a tray and just warm it through in the oven. That'll work too. Let's start making this delicious side dish. In the pot, I'm gonna go ahead and add about two tablespoons of olive oil and four tablespoons of unsalted butter. And I'm gonna cook this over medium high heat along with the vermicelli. I'm gonna toast the vermicelli in the butter and the oil until they're nice and lightly brown. That's just gonna take a couple of minutes. Once they're lightly brown like this, then they're ready. They're smelling really nice and toasted. I'm gonna go ahead and add two cups of rice. I've already rinsed this about five, six times with some cool water until the water ran clear, and I soaked the rice for 15 minutes. I'm also gonna add three cups of chicken stock, some lemon juice. Now the juice of one lemon is enough, but I like mine extra lemony, so I went ahead and I juiced two lemons. Give this a nice mix. Add two teaspoons of salt, a little bit of black pepper. We're gonna bring this to a boil. Once it boils, we're gonna reduce the heat to a simmer and we're gonna cover the pot and let the rice cook on low for 15 minutes. Once the rice is cooked, we're gonna fluff it up with a fork and it's ready to be served. Once the rice is ready, put it in a decorative, beautiful platter. I like this one that I have with lemons in it. It's a beautiful way to showcase the dish. I like to garnish it with some chopped parsley, some lemon wedges, and the rice is ready. And now for the star of this menu, the lamb chops. These are Greek style lamb chops. We served these at our cafe for the past 10 years while we had it. Everybody loved them. They are so loaded with flavor. The secret ingredient, I believe, is all the oregano that goes in here and the red wine vinegar. We're gonna go over the ingredients and we're gonna start making them, but I do wanna tell you that you can marinate these two days ahead of the party, which makes it great and very effortless for when you're entertaining. The only thing that you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind is an hour before your guests arrive or an hour before you're gonna throw this on the grill, make sure you take it out of the refrigerator and you set it at room temperature because you never 
never want to grill cold meat. You want it to come to room temperature and it's going to be perfect, succulent, and delicious. Let's go over the ingredients so we can start making these. We're gonna need some dried oregano, some cumin powder, salt, some red wine vinegar, some olive oil, black pepper, and garlic cloves. So I have two different cuts of lamb here. I have a rack of lamb, and I also have some lamb loins. Now the lamb loins are much less expensive than a whole rack would be, so you can do this with just the lamb loins. This rack of lamb here has been French, and French just means that over here the bone has been cleaned. When you're grilling lamb chops, you do not need that. So if you're getting it from your butcher, you could just get it just normal, have them separate it. They, they don't have to clean the bone because the fat and the meat that's on there is super tasty. We're gonna separate this in a second. First, we're gonna begin by making the marinade for this. And the marinade is where all the flavor is gonna come from. Even though we're using just a, a few ingredients, they're all the right ones. We're gonna begin with grating this garlic. We have five cloves of garlic and they're gonna add loads and loads of flavor. And when I'm grilling meat, I like for the garlic to be almost melted, so that's why I opt to, that's why I like to grate it. And any big chunk that falls in there, just take it out. So I love the flavor that red wine vinegar lends to the lamb chops. It tenderizes them and adds lots of good flavor. So a half a cup of vinegar goes into the marinade and a half a cup of olive oil, two teaspoons of salt, two teaspoons of dried oregano, but I always put more, not just in the marinade, but also on top. I love the flavor of oregano with the lamb and half a teaspoon of earthy cumin powder. Just mix this all together. We're gonna to mix it one more time before we pour it over our lamb. And just like that, the lamb marinade is ready. Now you can have your butcher do this if you're getting it from the butcher shop. I got mine from a supermarket, so I'm gonna do it by myself with a sharp knife. It's very easy to do. You slice through in between each bone and you just separate one from the other. If you're serving these racks of lamb, I would go for at least three per person, but this is what they're gonna look like once you separate them. I'm gonna put them on the baking tray. I'm gonna whisk the marinade together one more time just to make sure that all the ingredients are combined. And then I'm just gonna pour it all over the top of the lamb. And that's not where it ends. We're gonna make sure that everything is coated. So I'm gonna turn each piece of lamb over a few times to make sure that it gets some marinade. So before I turn them over, I'm just gonna season them with a little bit more salt and some black pepper. And I'm gonna do the same thing on both sides just to make sure that they're perfectly seasoned. And I'm also gonna put a little bit more oregano. I love that oregano on the lamb. I'm gonna flip them all over and then I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna season them one more time with some salt, pepper, and oregano. And now it's best to pop this in the refrigerator for at least four to six hours or overnight so that way the flavor can penetrate through the meat. Then once it's time to grill it, you wanna take it out and let it sit at room temperature for at least 30 minutes. Take some of the leftover marinade and just carefully brush it onto the lamb chops before you flip them over. Flip the lamb chops over after five minutes and then cook them five minutes on the other side over medium heat because you don't want them to catch on fire. And keep cooking them until they're done. Once the lamb chops are done, go ahead and tent the plate with foil. Now I like to eat my lamb chops medium well. What that means is if you put if you insert a meat thermometer into the thickest part of the meat, it should register 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Now the recipe will contain all the different temperatures for rare and medium rare and well done, and you can go ahead and follow that or cook it according to your liking. But medium well, they stay pretty juicy. They're not red on the inside because I really can't eat rare meat. But again, you make them however you like them. Then go ahead and garnish the plate with some lemon wedges. If you have fresh ro rosemary, put some rosemary in there. Chop up some mint and sprinkle it on top and your lamb chops will be ready to serve. They're gonna be succulent, flavorful, and delicious. All of the recipes along with a step-by-step -step game plan that's gonna take you from two weeks before the party happens all the way up to moments before your guests arrive can be downloaded for free. I'm gonna post a link underneath this video right here on Patreon. I hope you enjoy each and every recipe. I hope you have a great time with your guests and I will see you all here next time. Yes, us.